And if you like my content, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, leave a comment with your favorite part or what audio you want from me next. Enjoy. You wake up. I know you're still alive, so let me get a good look at you. No, do not look at the bodies. I didn't say to do that, now did I? Calm down and look at me. I need to see your eyes. Still human, though that could be temporary. Damn it. What are you doing here? You're a human in a nest of vampires. What are you? Some kind of thrall? A slave to one of these creatures? Oh, you don't have to worry about the vampires anymore. Believe me, they're gone. Most of them, anyway. Now answer the question. A victim. Well, that would explain the amount of blood on you. Yes, I've noticed that you're bleeding. Believe me, I'm trying very hard not to. Why not help me out with that? Distract me. Tell me how you got here. And depending on your story, I'll let you go. Oh, I know that you don't belong here. From the way that you're panicking, I don't think this is where you were expecting to wake up, now is it? Let me guess. You were out for a walk, maybe. Maybe even getting a few drinks. Probably at a bar. Then someone came along. Someone seductive. That you just couldn't take your eyes off of. They started talking to you. Brought you along. And you probably thought you were going to have a bit of fun. But it didn't turn out that way, did it? Did they lead you to this building? Or did you just wake up here? Ignored the warning signs, then. You should be more careful in the future. I bet you looked surprised when your... partner introduced you to their friends. If I know vampires, they'd have started tearing into you like takeout. No way they wouldn't have started cutting you and feeding on you as soon as you entered their premises. Just like all these other dead folks you're lying on top of. Oh, they're dead. Believe me. Not a single one of their hearts is still beating. Which naturally begs the question. Why is yours? Maybe I got here in just the nick of time? It's certainly a possibility. But vampire wounds aren't like regular wounds. Any hunter will tell you that they're particularly lethal. And it's very unlikely that someone, such as yourself, would survive even the mildest of injuries from them. It's not an insult by any means. In my centuries of hunting these creatures, I've found less than a handful of people that actually survived their feedings. At least, without turning. Though I doubt that could be considered surviving. Yes, I said centuries. But I'm the one asking questions here. Not you. There's something about you. Something I can't quite put my finger on. You're covered in bruises, cuts, and bite marks. Yes, I noticed them. It's pretty hard not to. By all rights, 
you should be dead or turned. In which case, I'd have finished you off. But you're not. You're still alive. Your heart is still beating normally. And besides your panic at the scene when you woke up, you're otherwise fine. No worse for wear. A bit of cleanup and you'll be as good as new. Right as rain. So how the hell does that work? What is it about you that I'm sensing? This strange power coming from you. Is there something you're not telling me, perhaps? Or maybe you're just unaware, ignorant of what you are. Let's test that. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? No? Hmm. Your heart's still beating normally, so you're not lying. Yes, I can hear your heartbeat. I'd be able to hear the others in this room as well. If they were still alive. That's how I knew you were telling the truth when you said you were just a victim of these creatures. How I knew I didn't have to kill you. At least, for the moment. I'm not joking about that either. I'm still waiting for you to turn. Expecting it, even. The second I see a flash of red in your eyes, you're dust, my friend. Ah, you finally noticed it. Yes, my eyes are red as well. The same red I'm looking for in yours. Normally I cover them up with contacts, more sunglasses, but never when I'm hunting. When I prowl the streets, looking for bloodsuckers, I want them to see my eyes. I want them to know it was one of their own that felled them. You may have noticed that I mentioned I'd been hunting them for centuries earlier. That's because I am a vampire, friend. At least, technically, on a biological level. Spiritually, I'm not. Spiritually, I'm their worst nightmare. They call me Vampiro Kare Vunaza Vampiri. Pardon my terrible pronunciation, but that's Romanian for the vampire that hunts vampires. Yes, that is what they call me, because that is what I am. That's how I wound up in this delightful little den of evil. I'd heard of this group abducting people and decided to put a stop to it. It's just instinct at this point. Something I have to do. Once, very long ago, I was human. A vampire hunter. A part of a larger group. A team. We did what I do now. Stalk the streets. Fighting creatures of the night and protecting the innocent. But we were all human. Fighting the undead. It was a hard life. But a good one. I went to bed happy, knowing that I was doing the right thing, saving lives and killing monsters. Sure, we had our close calls, our tough scrapes, but I wouldn't have traded that life for anything. Until it ended. We made the mistake of tracking down a vampire elder that was passing through town. Some kind of vampire priest. An ancient being that's fed on thousands and lived for centuries. Very powerful creatures. Almost godlike. There's something about the blood they feed upon. It makes them much stronger. And if they eat enough, their powers increase. Most hunters have never seen one in their lifetimes. 
There's no way we could pass up the opportunity to kill it. I was the one who planned it out. So, it was my plan that got them killed. We called in every favor we had, calculated the Elder's travel route, and schedule to the exact second. And the bastard still tore through us like we were nothing. Six experienced vampire hunters went into that elder's home. And only one left. Though in a way, I really didn't. There's only two things that I remember from that night. The screams of my friends being ripped apart. And the feeling of vampire fangs tearing into my neck. I'm still not sure what happened. How I escaped. But I remember waking up. Passed out, bloody, in an alleyway. Part of my arm was sticking out of the shadows. Burning in the sun. And I still have the scars. See? It felt awful. Another second, and I wouldn't be speaking to you here now. I knew right away what I was. What had happened. What had been done to me. I could feel it in my throat. The thirst. The desire for human blood. But I couldn't do it. Couldn't feed upon the innocent like the monsters that turned me. I knew that I had become the thing that I had sworn to destroy, and that I was betraying everything I had stood for by virtue of existing in that moment. Part of me wanted to step out into the sun, to let the holy rays of light shining down from the heavens eviscerate me and send me to the friends that had left me. But I couldn't. I was too afraid. And there was this thought that kept filling my head that I just couldn't shake. What if I die? And I go to hell because I'm a vampire. I didn't want to risk it. Not without atoning in some way first. And here I am now. Three centuries later. Trying to make up for that cowardice. By continuing my duty. By killing the creatures of the night, even though I am one. I've never fed on anyone, even though the thirst in my throat still remains. When I get desperate, I drink animal blood, though it tastes... disgusting. I don't think we're supposed to drink it, really. But I find that if I just pretend it's human, it helps slightly. Some of the people I work with now manage to conjure up some kind of synthetic blood in a lab. It's not real, and it doesn't help much, really. Less than the animal blood. But if I'm ever desperate or need to focus, it can help calm me down. I still have no idea how I am... what I am. How I resisted the Elder's power and remain myself. But I'm still here, somehow. Still me. Still fighting. Though, I don't dare go up against the Elder we encountered. That creature is far too powerful. Besides, I've heard nothing about them in all this time. They just disappeared. I've spent my time just doing what I can. Fighting the dregs of vampire society. The ones that lure victims to feed on. The ones who turn into monsters once their fangs meet skin. I know it's not enough to make up for what happened. For what I am. But someday, it will be. But if I could just kill that elder that killed my friends, I know I'd feel better. It'd be enough to finally remove the guilt I feel. <sighs> I'm sorry for telling you all this. 
for providing me with so much information. But there is a reason for it. I'm trying to sway you to my cause, you see. I'm trying to make you sympathize, so that you'll come with me. Your blood, whatever you are, it could be a vital weapon against the vampires. I'm not sure exactly how it works, or how it could work. But there are people I work with, other hunters, that can study you and figure out how exactly we can use you. Now we can use your... your blood. Sorry, sorry. Just for a moment I caught a whiff of your scent and... <sighs> it doesn't matter. Nothing matters, except the mission. So, stand up. We're leaving. I'm getting you out of here. And you're gonna help us beat these monsters. For the first time, we have something new in our arsenal. Something that gives us the slightest glimmer of hope. And I'll be damned if we don't take it. You don't get a choice. I'm sorry. But you could be the very thing that helps us win the blood war. That ends centuries of fighting and finally lets us beat those monsters. I've seen far too many friends die to risk losing this thing just because you don't want to. So, sorry about this. But you're coming with me. Hello everyone, it's Prince Cairo, and thank you all for getting to the end of my audio. Special thank you goes out to all of my patrons, especially that of my precious pets. Mystic37, Creek, Venowin, Toka, T. Briscoe, Michelle, Nikki Pele, Lunar, and Lindsay Travers. Thank you all so, so much for all that you do for me. It truly does mean the world to me, be you patron or not. If you're interested in keeping up with me and more of my antics, be sure to check out my link tree. It'll have all of my socials included in my Patreon, and that'll be in the pinned comment down below. Thank you all so, so much. Once again, I've been Prince Cairo, and remember that your prince loves you all. Mwah.